TNT, what is good this week? How are you doing? Man, how has your verse memorization gone this past week? Have you done good? Have you done your absolute best? I hope you have. I hope you memorized last week's verse and you're ready to learn a new one, right? Now, we've been learning about evidence of salvation. What is evidence of salvation? Well, that's just proof that we actually believe what we believe. Sometimes we say, am I really saved? Am I really in a relationship with God? Am I really going to go to heaven when I die? Well, how do we know whether we, we are or not? God puts evidence into our life that will become really apparent, will become so obvious to us that we are, in fact, God's child. It's really special. So we learned about a few of those so far. We learned about faith, that if we really believe that God is who he said he was, that we're going to have faith that God is who he says he is, and that he's going to keep the promises that he made for us, including us not losing that relationship with him, no matter how bad we mess up. Also, there's prayer. We learned about prayer last week, remember? And we learned that if we are actually growing closer to God, then we're going to be able to pray not only a lot, but pray for the things that God wants instead of the things that we want. And that can be really hard to do sometimes. This we got a whole new one. This week, we are learning about studying God's Word. That's right. If you are a follower of God, a child of God, for real, then you're going to want to study God's Word. Now, if you're in Awana right now, I think you're doing a good job at that. Maybe you hate Awana. You only watch these videos because your mom and dad make you. All right, well, first of all, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. But, in general, I know many of you really enjoy learning new things about God's Word. And you lo love learning new things about the Bible. That's great. I hope that continues to grow in you. And I hope that you continue to want to learn more and more about the Bible each and every day. But let's learn this week's verse that talks more about that exact subject. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Say it along with me if you want to. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. All right, so I really like, love these verses. I say that most weeks, but I do. I love these verses. And uh, there's a lot of big words in there. I mean, really big words that are hard for me to understand. So let's talk about a few of them, okay? Now, you really can't talk about this verse without covering this one right here. Inspiration. What does that mean? Well, obviously you know the uh, 1984 Chicago classic. You're the inspiration, right? Okay, probably not. But an inspiration is something that makes you want to do something else, right? It, it makes you want to be great, right? That's not what this means here. So even if you know the definition of inspiration, forget it, all right? Don't even think about inspiration. Instead, I want you to learn something totally new. Because the word that we have here in Greek is theonoustas. <laughs> you want to say that with me? All right, you ready? Theonoustas. One more time. Theonoustas. Don't worry. I, I, know it sounds like you're, I know it sounds like you're casting a Harry Potter spell. You're not, all right? Theonoustas means God breathed. Just go like this. <sighs> right? That's what this, what this one word means. It means God breathed. So all scripture, all the Bible is breathed out by God. Think about that. Every single Bible verse that you have was breathed out by God. Everything from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 21-something. Or Revelation 22-something. You get the idea. Now, all of it, God breathed out. And as other people were writing all this stuff down, they were getting these waves of inspiration, where God was specifically influencing them to write down the exact things that God wanted them to write down. That's so cool. Every single Bible verse that you've learned up to this point, every single Bible verse that you've read in your lifetime was breathed out by God. Now that alone is cool, but there's more we got to talk about, because... Also, you have all these extra words in here, like profitable. What does that mean? It means worthwhile or useful. So, profitable for what? For doctrine. 
What is doctrine? Doctrine is truth. It's profitable for learning or teaching or understanding new information. Okay, so if I want to know more about, uh, you know what, with uh, Sparks this week, we're talking about Joshua. If I want to learn more about what Joshua did, where do I go? The book of Joshua, right? But if I want to learn more about the gospel and what Jesus did for me, I go to the gospels. Or if I want to learn more about the Holy Spirit or the Trinity, where do I go? Well, I go to numerous places throughout the entire Bible that talk about that, right? So it's probable for doctrine, but also it's probable for reproof. Reproof is not a word that I use very often. But let me tell you what reproof means. Reproof means like conviction, all right? If I have done something wrong, the Bible, which is breathed out by God, is going to tell me that, hey, Charles, what you're doing is wrong. And then I get convicted or I feel like, oh man, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. But it doesn't stop there because the Bible doesn't just make you feel guilty. That wouldn't be really fun, would it? You just read the Bible and you're like, oh, I'm a bad person. No, it goes further than that. It re convicts you, it reproves you, but it doesn't stop there. It corrects you. You know what correcting means. Not only do you know that you've done something wrong, but then you change. You fix it. The Bible doesn't just say, hey, you messed up, now feel bad for the rest of your life. No, it says you messed up, but we can change that. We can do things a better way. So not only does the Bible reprove you, reprove, I'm not sure, but it also corrects you. That's super important. That's super great. And lastly, for instruction in righteousness. And what does that mean? Not only does the Bible tell you that you've messed up and make you to realize that, not only does it correct you and make your path straight, but what's the point of correcting you? To make you more righteous. What does righteous mean? Maybe you'll remember. It means morally perfect. Morally perfect. So the Bible is making you more and more like Jesus, which is so awesome. Hey, it's pretty cool that I'm starting to look like Jesus with my hair right now, or at least how we paint pictures of Jesus. But hey, I actually want to live like Jesus. That's what I want to do because I'm a follower of Christ. And you should too, whether you're starting to look like Jesus or not, right? You should want to be like Jesus. And that's what the Bible does in our lives. So that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, this verse alone is pretty cool, but I got to tell you the backstory behind it, all right? It's got a really neat backstory. Any guesses who this verse was written to? Written to a guy named Timothy. Now, Paul, you know about Paul. Paul was writing to his friend Timothy. Paul had gone missionary journeys with Timothy. And Timothy had actually been raised by his mother and his grandmother. And they taught him lots of things about the Bible as he was growing up. They didn't have the New Testament then. They only had the Old Testament. But Timothy's mother and grandmother taught him so much about the Old Testament. And he was really impressive. He loved learning about God's Word. And people were, like, impressed by how much he knew. Hey, that's probably a lot like you, right? Right now, you love learning God's Word. You love Awana. You love soaking all this in, right? And you know what? I bet when you say your verses around your, your, your uncle or your aunt or your grandma and grandpa, I bet they're pretty impressed, right? Shoot, even I'm impressed. You guys are doing an awesome job. Well, here's the deal. As Timothy got older and older, he ran into Paul. And Paul also was impressed by how much he knew about God's Word. And they went on these missionary journeys together. They went far away from Timothy's home and shared the gospel all around the world. But eventually, they both got older. And Paul, he wound up in prison. And in fact, Paul is about to die. He's about to be beheaded because he loves Jesus so much and shares the gospel so much people in Rome, the emperor, did not like that. Timothy, on the other hand, Timothy's older now. And he's not just some kid who's loving God's word. No, he actually is a pastor now in the city of Ephesus. And so, these are Paul's famous last words, as far as we know. This is the last letter that Paul wrote, as far as we know. And he wrote it to Timothy. And he encouraged him. 
he supported him. He said, you're doing a great job. Here's some other things you can do to make things even easier, to do an even better job of what you're already doing. But he said, hey, don't let other people boss you around. Don't let other people push you around. And also he said, make sure that you are teaching other people to love the Bible, to love God's Word, just as much as you love God's Word. And so that's what Timothy was doing. And Paul is reminding him of these truths so that he could teach other people about God's Word. Now, why do I share this story with you? First of all, it's a cool story. But also, like I said, you yourself are a lot like Timothy right now. You love God's Word, or at least I hope you do. You do, in my eyes, because of how much you put into Awana each week. So my hope for you is that one day you'll be like Timothy that it wouldn't stop here, that you wouldn't just study God's Word now, earn your Awana shares, buy the helicopter or whatever it is that you want from the Awana store, and then go on about your life. My hope is that you would continue to love God's Word more and more. I hope that you yourself would go on those missionary journeys one day. Man, it'd be really cool if you got to go serve God overseas, maybe for just like a few weeks at a time, but maybe for the, your whole life. I would love it if you became a pastor one day. I would love it if you became a Sunday school teacher one day. Or there's so many other things that you might one day do for God. And guess what? Even if you don't get a job where you get paid to share the gospel like I do, you still can make a huge impact teaching other people about God's Word. Even if you're a teacher, a plumber, a garbage man, a... Uh, a, a news anchor. I mean, there's so many different ways that you get to talk to people on a daily basis and you get to tell them about how much you love Jesus and how much you love God's Word. And so that's my hope for you is that you will be a Timothy, just like Timothy. All right? Hey, I just wanted to remind you of something. We don't have any Awana videos coming out next week. That is because, if you remember, we uh, had to... Uh, make the Awana schedule last August. And when we made that schedule, we thought that we were going to be able to come back for in-person Awana by the end of the year. But that did not work out, all right? COVID stuck around a little bit. So we had put some breaks in there. One was in February. And then one was this upcoming Friday, which is also when we have our Good Friday service. We can't have in-person Awana when we have the Good Friday service, all right? It's, it would be chaos. It would not be good, right? So we already had that break scheduled. And so rather than, like we said a few weeks ago, rather than put out a whole new schedule where we put in new dates, we decided to keep you guys on the same schedule. So, hey, go back and memorize some old verses that you're not as familiar with. Because remember, for every Awana verse that you have already learned, that you go back and say, that's 10, uh, sorry, that's one extra Awana share, up to 10. So you can get some Awana shares this week just by going back and saying old verse instead of learning a new one. Those are some easy shares to get, all right? So I encourage you to do that. Also, we normally would have had Family Night Out next week on April the 2nd, but also uh, Family Night Out and the Good Friday service also wouldn't really work well happening at the same time. So push that back one more week, and we look forward to seeing you at Family Night Out on April the 9th, all right? Hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. God bless.